in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome once again to Sunday School, Sunday School at Grace Baptist Church. Today, let's take our time, and consider these things deeply. We're going to talk about duty, D-U-T-Y, duty. Just like there is a godly sorrow producing repentance to salvation and a worldly sorrow producing death, there is duty that is unprofitable. But there is a duty that is godly and therefore profitable. There is a godly performance of duty and an ungodly performance of duty. That's what we're going to examine here today. If you will recall, in a number of uh, our past lessons, I have taught taught that as Christians we must not just go through the motions in our conduct or do things just because of duty, but that we must obey the Lord as cited in Ephesians 6.6. 6. But as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. And brothers and sisters, those hearts must be directed by God and filled by God with the love of God. 2 Thessalonians 3.5 Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. And additionally, the Bible proclaims the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Remember the uh, list of the portion, portions of the fruit of the Spirit? They begin with love and are intimately related to love. So what we have established thus far in this message is, it, is that we must be doing the will of God from the heart as motivated by love in our lives as Christians. That being true, how do we deal with duty as related to being a Christian? We will uh, begin by looking at two times we see the word duty appear, both in the King James Version of the New Testament and the New King James Version. I'm reading from the New King James Version. First, Luke chapter 17, Luke 17, verse 10. Luke 17, 10. In reference to servants, this is what we see in this verse. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Now we're going to be looking next at Romans 15, 27. In this context, in Romans chapter 15, Paul is speaking of bringing a monetary gift from Gentile Christians to Jewish saints at Jerusalem. Romans 15, 27. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, 
their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Now, I want to bring to mind something for you. The word debtors there in the first of that verse and the word duty come from exactly the same Greek root word. That's extremely important as we go through this study. We must look, when I just spoke of the Greek word, we must look at the Greek word translated duty from the original text. And understanding here is going to lead us to the will of God being done from the heart. Wouldn't you like a little more help in that area? I know I would. Though the original text word is a verb. Listen now, listen. It is translated as a noun in both the King James Version and the New King James Version in the two scriptures that we read. Now that's important because I want us to look at what the original text word means. I'm not changing the word as far as its translation here duty, but we need to understand what I'm going to be telling you now. The original text word means to owe, to be indebted, to be bound by what is due or fitting, to be bound by what is consequently necessary. In addition, if we were to look at the word figuratively, it means to be under obligation, from which we get the words ought, you know, you ought to do this, must, and should. Looking at the two previous verses, with the words in mind that I've just said, sheds great light on the truth taught here, as well as leading us to other verses with the same Greek root word that are connected to these two texts. Now please bear with me as we look at these verses where we see this word duty more properly used as a verb from the list we just mentioned. We're going to look at three other translations that are credible in dealing with these two texts. And first of all, I'm going to lead off with Luke 17.10. If anything, listen to these translations because they're very interesting. Well done. Luke 17.10 from the New American Standard Version, 1971. So you too, when you do all the things which are commanded you, say, we are unworthy slaves. We have done only that which we ought to have done. That is there instead of the word duty. We have done that which we are obligated to have done. Now looking at Romans 15, 27. The 1901 authorized standard, excuse me, American standard version. Yea, it hath been their good pleasure, and their debtors they are. Remember, that's the same Greek root word that we get duty from. Their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, the spiritual things of the Jews, they owe it to them also to minister unto them in carnal things. Duty, they owe it. Now, from the Revised Standard Version of 1952, Romans 15, 27, they were pleased to do it. And indeed, they are in debt. Once again, they are in debt to them. For if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings... They ought, 
also to be of service to them in material things. They are obligated also to be of service to them in material blessings. Again, ought or obligated are obligated there instead of the word duty. I hope you're starting to get the idea now as to what we're talking about when we talk about duty. They owe it. They are obligated. And then finally, again, in the New American Standard of 1971 from Romans 15, 27, yes, they were pleased to do so, and they are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual things, they are indebted. There, instead of the word duty, they are indebted to minister them to them also in material things. Now, having looked at these translations and considering this Greek word more fully, I want us all to, also to consult the English dictionary and the word duty. Uh, I tell people a lot of times, I don't understand a lot of words. I need to know better what these words mean. So I'm often going to the English dictionary as well as Greek lexicons. The English word duty comes from the word due, D-U-E, that we will also view in a moment. Duty, the definition of duty, that which a person is bound by any natural, moral, or legal obligation to do or to perform. They are bound to do or perform something. What has to be done or being due towards another. Obligation to do something. We're talking about duty. Now to the English word due, from which we get the word duty. The word due means to owe, required to be paid, required by the circumstances, that which ought to be paid or done. Of course, in the words duty and due, we see debt and indebtedness. Now, I hope that's giving you some background as to what we're talking about when we're talking about duty. Let's look more at the Christian and duty. We know as Christians we are no longer bound by the law for our salvation. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Romans 6.14 I don't ple take pleasure in saying this. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed, but there's something I never really considered here. We're not under law, but folks, we are under grace. Now what does that word under mean? I've never looked at it in this light, but it's absolutely true. We are under grace. We are placed in an inferior place to grace, which means that grace is superior, meaning that grace rules over us. How about that? Grace rules over us. And in ruling over us, grace enables us to obey God. Look to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And we're going to be reading verses 34 through 40. Matthew 22 verses 34 through 40. 
But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they're talking about Christ, having silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked, testing him, that's Christ, and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. But very close to his crucifixion, the Lord Jesus said this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Now here's the newness. As I have loved you, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. John 13, 34. Key words once again, as I have loved you. Only by grace that rules over you and I as Christians. Only by grace, the grace of God, is this possible to love each other as Christ has loved us. And it's only possible as we exercise the first portion of the fruit of the Holy Spirit poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Love. Only then, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Only then can we fulfill our Christian duty. As we see in Romans 13, 8. Through 10. Look there with me. Romans chapter 13. We're going to be reading verses 8 through 10. And we're talking about Christian duty. I sure hope you listened to me when I was talking about all those verbs. Owing and the like. Romans 13, 8 through 10. Very first word. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the law. The love is fulfilled by the grace of love worked in God's people by the Holy Spirit. In verse 8, the word O is from the same Greek root word we have dealt with in great length. Our word duty. And to look at a Another verse to bolster this idea of Christian duty. Consider with me 1 John 4, 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Guess what? Same Greek root word. We are obligated to love one another. It is our duty. We are bound to love one another. In Christian marriage, 
Let me help you if you're married. We see this in Ephesians 5, 28. So us, husbands, so husbands ought, same word, to love their own wives as their own bodies. Husbands are obligated, are bound by Christian duty to love their own wives. Love cannot be anything less than from the heart. Heartfelt. You can't go through the motions there. You can't do it with an ungodly heart. Pray. Pray, Christian. Pray to be empowered by God's Holy Spirit to truly love. The great duty of the Christian is to love God and then to love others. Since this loving God and loving others is accomplished by the grace of God in his people and is referred to as godliness. Can you refer to it as anything less than godliness? It is not then called an unprofitable performance of duty. It is not then called an unprofitable performance of duty as we saw in Luke 17.10. You have scripture for that, preacher? 1 Timothy 4.8 includes this statement. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Nothing, nothing is more godly than loving God and then others. If we love God, we keep His commandments. 1 John chapter 3. As the Spirit of God empowers us to love God and others, we are enabled to partake in a sanctified duty. Our robes of, of righteousness have been made white in the blood of the Lamb. It's sanctified. And those outside of Christ... Do what is right because of duty without the love of God. It is unprofitable, useless in the eyes of God. I'm going to turn to some verses now that are very familiar. You don't really have to turn there because you've heard them so many times. But I want to look at Matthew chapter 7. Remember what I just said. If you perform duty without the love of God, it is unprofitable. It is useless. Could this be the case, at least in part, in these verses that we're now going to read from Matthew chapter 7? Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone, this is Christ, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In John 16, 2, Christ says, listen now, talking about duty again. Christ says, they will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. 
It's duty. It's duty. It's godless duty without the love of God. And brothers and sisters, people of God, we have a Christian brother who lived in that realm of duty but was gloriously saved by the grace of God and enabled by that same grace to love those whom he had delivered to death. And of course, he was able also, above all, to love the God who delivered him with so great a salvation. Who in the world are we talking about? Paul, the apostle. One who by the grace of the sovereign God was transformed from performing godless duty to the God-ordained duty of loving God and then others with a God-given love from the heart. At the forefront, of doing the things of Christ is considering others before we think about ourselves. And at the heart of that is the Christian duty of loving God and then others. Pray, pray that God will enable us to live our lives in that manner. Amen.